Okay, so in this part of the tutorial, we are going to be looking at smashing one of these columns on the floor to get that dilapidated look. Now, the easiest way to do that is to take my cloner object, okay, and make it editable. And what that does is that creates a whole load of these loft nerbs here that are fine to use. Now, the rest I'm happy to leave as loft nerbs because we're not really going to be using them but I'm going to take one of them out and I'm going to pick the same one as I did in my last image. So I'm going to pick that one. Okay, I'm going to take loft nerbs four out and then I'm going to hide this cloner object because I want to just mainly focus on this. Right, before we get going, I'm going to want to make this editable. Okay, I find it works much better with the Voronoi fracture tool, which we're going to get to in a minute. So select your loft nerbs and then you know go to make editable or press C and that will make your object editable. Now you can see that it makes it in a couple of parts so it's the main body okay which is that and then you've got the two caps. We are going to need to select both of those then go to right click and connect objects and delete so then we end up with one mesh okay and then the last step just go to points tool control A right click and optimize and that just makes sure that any points that are in the same place become the same point as it were so it forces the caps to uh, probably weld themselves to the rest of that column awesome so now what we're going to need to do is this is going to be the thing that we're going to smash so i'm just going to angle it on the floor okay so that it's got a little bit of an angle and then give it some height and then we're going to need to find something for it to smash upon. So I'm going to use a disk. So if I just go up to here and create a disk, okay, very tiny. So I'm just going to make that a bit bigger because that's what this is going to smash on. And we can sort of adjust and move stuff about. At the moment, this is just going to be used to catch this. So in order to use some dynamics, we're going to need to put some dynamics tags on things. The loft nerbs which is going to be the one that smashes okay we are going to need to add some dynamics to but first we need to put it in the voronoi fracture so if i just go up to mograph and then if i hover over voronoi fracture and if i hold down alt and press the voronoi fracture button it already makes it a pre uh, a parent of the thing that i had selected like earlier which is brilliant okay um, and then i'm going to add my dynamics tags to that so the Voronoi fracture and then tags, go to simulation and rigid body, because we want to make sure that these are, you know, solid pieces of marble. And then we go to the disc and we go to tags and we go to simulation and collider. That means that it will collide with it as opposed to just falling straight through. Okay. Now, if I was just press play, you can see that it smashes itself on the floor. Absolutely wonderful and lovely. That's exactly what I wanted to do. I don't particularly like the number of fragments that it's smashing at the moment, so I'm going to go back to my Voronoi, and then I'm going to go to my sources, my point distribution source, and I think 20 is way too many, so I'm going to see what 5 looks like and see how that distributes. Okay, so it's quite, quite even. If I just press play, it gives me a few little pieces. It's not too bad. I might increase that to, say, 7 just so that there's a few more bits. And you want to play around with the seed setting so that you get the distribution looking sort of somehow, you know, more like you want it to. You know, you can play around, just increase that. Oh, I quite like that one because uh, it leaves the two ends intact. So if I just press play, there you go, and they roll themselves away. Now, you can control how much they sort of roll away using these settings so i've got bounce and friction when it comes to the collider body um, and it just means that we can control um, how much it sort of or bounce and collides so with both of these selected you can use the two tags you can control how much bounce there is and i don't want there to be that much because it was supposed to have landed on soft ground so if i just press play now there you go they don't sort of skid as much although they are doing quite a lot but I am going to increase the friction there to say 95%. So now if I press play, there you see, they don't skid and move around. They roll, but they don't skid, which is cool. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to increase my animation length purely because I want it to sort of work its way a bit better. So if I play 150 frames and then press play, so that rolls its way out and stays. OK, I quite like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click pause just before the end. And that puts that in a position that I quite like. Maybe I'm actually going to undo that and I'm going to try a different fracture. This is all down to you. You know, you guys can play around with this as much as you like, see how it works, OK, and see if you're happy with its results. That one's awful, so I'm not going to have that. So let's go to a different seed. And just, just keep playing. Just see, you know, oh dear. You know, you just want to have a look and see whether or not you feel that this gives you the sort of dilapidated result that you want. I might start it slightly higher so that when it presses play, stuff falls out. There we go. I like that. Wonderful. So now you've played around with it. Now you've got the sort of space that you want and the way it's fallen apart. OK, simply get the Voronoi and make it editable. And there we end up with our individual Voronoi parts, OK, which is absolutely fine. Um, they've all got display colour on because the Voronoi is deliberately designed to colourise your fragments so you can see what's going on. You can turn it off before you start, or I'm just going to now select all of those and I'm going to turn Use Colour off. And there we go. We've got our uh, Roman column. So now if I just turn on my cloner object, you can see what we've got here. So using this Voronoi, okay, you can rotate it around and make it look like it's collapsed that way. Maybe it's fallen a bit. Use the other views and move around just to give you a sense of sort of direction and perspective. And hopefully you can see that we've got this nice dilapidated column there. Cool. Okay. Well, that was relatively simple. OK, and we've got our columns here all ready to go. So what we're going to do in the next part is we're going to look at how to grow Ivy on it with the Ivy Grower Free plugin. OK, I shall catch you in the next tutorial.